All right, thank you, Katie, and good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Feature Friday for Jurors today. My name is Dwayne Carey, and I will be going through the Time Matters Jurist link for you. Um, we are redoing this because in our newest version of Time Matters 14.1, we have actually reconfigured how the link connects the two programs together and where time entries actually go. So for those of you who with existing Time Matters installs, we'll show you how this works. Um, if you upgrade to Time Matters 14.1 from our previous version, it will automatically upgrade the link for you. If you're a new user or considering Time Matters, we'll show you how this link is set up and then how it can actually help you in going forward. And again, my name is Dwayne Carey. I'm an end user trainer with LexisNexis. I started back in August 2005. I actually was a tech support agent for Time Matters uh, for a year and a half, and I moved to the training department after that. And I've been training ever since, and I currently do our Time Matters training, Juris uh, Billing Matters, um, occasionally counseling, and also PC law. So that's just a bit of background about me. So today we're going to look at the link. Um, some of the benefits of having a link between Time Matters and Juris is Time Matters will provide you with a front office so you can track emails, documents, phone calls, have a calendar, etc. So you may be using multiple products to track all that and then using Juris for your back end for billing and accounting. Time Matters can basically just give you that one program you need to track all that front office stuff. And then you'll be able to build directly from those records in Time Matters and create time entries in Juris Suite. And we can also help you capture any missed time with our time entry advisor in Time Matters. It can go through your front office and see any entries that you've added but never billed out. And if you're using the two programs and link them together, you don't have to worry about a double entry between the clients and the matters. If you add them into Time Matters, they can be sent to Juris, or you can have them in Juris and you can sync them over to Time Matters. You don't have to worry about tracking them and entering them multiple times with different pieces of software. So with that, a lot of this PowerPoint is going to walk you through the steps. So after the session today, you will get this PowerPoint that has all the walkthrough. I'm not going to go through each slide. I'm actually just going to do this setup in a virtual machine. So first thing for this link, if you're setting it up for the first time, if you're going to use Time Matters as your primary client and matter entering software, in order for that information to get to Juris, you need to do a little setup in Juris first. So I'm going to open up Juris. I'm going to go to Setup and Manage. In Setup and Manage, I'm going to change mode. Of course, if you're doing this, um, you want to make sure everybody's logged out of Juris when you change mode, because we're going to go to Maintenance mode. We need everybody else logged out of the system for this. So I'm going to change to Maintenance. It's going to tell you, make every sh everybody log out, and then we'll continue. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this feature called the client template. So if you've seen that back there before and you're not quite sure what it's for, this is one of the things we have it for, is we need to set up a template that we can use to transfer information from Time Matters to Juris. on new to create a new client. I would usually use a client code that's out of my normal And I'll just use the standard rate fee schedule, expense schedule. For my layout, I'll use my T100. Same with the pre-bill. So fill in all the required fields like you would if you were entering a normal client in. Really nothing in here I'm worrying about, but of course I have to click on each tab to save. And then save this new client. 
I've had some people who actually in the client name may say time matters then do not use so people don't try to add things directly to it in Juris. So once you have your client set up, we can go back to set up and manage to our client template and we can now add that client here to be available to us in time matters for the linking and then save. And you can also set up multiple client templates here and have each user have an own, their own template for specific pieces of Juris information. I'm not going to take the time to go through all that right now, but it is possible to do that. I'm just going to have the one generic for the moment. And I'll arrow out, and then I will change my mode back to normal mode. At that point, that's the basic setup I need in Juris in order to send information from Time Matters to Juris. At that point, I can exit out. Now, the next thing I need to do is be, have the two programs be able to talk to each other. In order to do that, you need to install an ODBC driver. Now, a lot of times when you're setting up links, um, you only have to set stuff up on the server. For this ODBC driver we're about to install, you need to make sure that's installed on each machine that wants to send information from Time Matters to Juris. So install an ODBC driver. I'm just going to go to my Start and Control Panel. And depending on what operating system or what version of Windows you're using, the steps might be slightly different to get to where I'm going. But I'm going to go to Administrative Tools and I'm going to go to Data Sources ODBC. Once you get here, then the steps should be the same for whatever operating system you're using. Open up my data sources and now I need to add a new data source. And what I need to add is a SQL data source for SQL Server. Again, these steps will be in the PowerPoint. They're also in the Time Matters help files. I click on Finish. Now I just got to set up some information about this ODBC driver. I can give it a name. I just usually call this uh, the TM link. You can call it whatever you like. Description, Time Matters to Juris. Billing link, again, you can call it whatever you like. And then you've got to connect it to your SQL Server. And when you hit the little drop down, your SQL Server should pop up. In this case, it's my Win 7 Pro 32. I click Next. In this step, I have to use SQL Server authentication with a login and password. And then down below, you're going to change this. This is your Windows login for this computer student. But what you need to use is Juris, capital R, capital O. So that'll be your login. And then your password is going to be Juris with a capital J. And then it's going to be 58747. Again, all this information will be in the, in the PowerPoints. So you need to use this login and password to set up this ODBC driver. Click Next again. Now, you need to change the default database. It's going to point to your JBills database, which is your bills images. That's not going to help us. We need to point to your actual Juris database. So make sure you select your actual main Juris database. It be Juris with your digits. Then click Next. You can ignore the other settings. Just click Next, and then just click Finish. And now we should have our driver set up, and now we can test our data source to verify we've set it up correctly. Test completed successfully. That's the message you want to see. And that'll set up the ODBC driver so the two programs can communicate. And again, this needs to be done on each computer that wants to use the link to talk between the programs. Click OK, and now my ODBC driver is set up. We can now set up the link for the two programs to talk, and that is done in Time Matters. I will try to point out the differences between the 14.1 setup and the previous versions of Time Matters as we go through. There's not a whole lot of differences. We go to File, Setup, General, and Program Level. So at the program level of Time Matters, we're going to click on the links because we're linking the program. 
We're going to make sure Activate Billings checked, and then we're going to select Juris as our billing link. I will now set my billing options. The Juris data, this is that ODBC driver we created. So we hit the lookup, find our driver, click OK, and now we change this username and password to go back to that Juris RO that we set up on the ODBC driver. So Juris 58747. And this is how we normally would have set up the link in the past. We now have a new section 14.1 where you have to tell Time Matters the name of your Juris Suite server. So wherever the Juris Suite server software is installed, we need that machine name. In this case, mine's Win7 Pro32. Now, if your Time Matters and Juris servers are installed on the same machine, then Time Matters down below will tell you the name of the server machine. In this case, I've got them both on the same server, so Win7 Pro32 is the name of that machine. So once you have this information, test your link to verify that everything was entered incorrectly. And this usually takes about a minute or so for the link to test. And if it goes to not responding, just let it sit for a moment. It's testing the link, it's just not refreshing the screen. Just a few more seconds and it should find it. There it goes. And that's what you should see, Juris test successful. So it found the link, the two programs should be able to talk to each other. Now there's just a little bit more setup we need to do. Client matter options. This first section, if you want time matters to be the primary entry point for your clients in matters, that's why we had to set up that client template in Juris because Juris requires stuff like the fee schedule, the expense schedule, the office code. So we would enter that template number that we created, in this case 9999. That is my template that I want to match up and fill in any information that Time Matters doesn't have that Juris requires. This second option is if you want to use Juris to add clients and matters to. You can then pull those clients and matters over to Time Matters via a sync. I'm going to show you both ways just in case you don't know which way you want to set it up or just want to see how it works. Then next, if it's a closed matter, do you want to add closed Juris matters to Time Matters or do you not even want them in Time Matters at this point? And if you have a Juris client not marked as an individual in Juris, they'll come into Time Matters as an organization. So this tab is just telling us kind of which direction we want to send information to. Right now I'm going to set it up for both ways so you can see both. Billing options. How do we want to send this billing over to Juris? Should Time Matters records be billed more than once? Do you want a build record to be sent to Juris more than once? You might want to watch that so you don't duplicate billing. Do you want to be able to allow changes on the billing form or do you want it to just pull in the information and no changes allowed? It is what it is. So just go through these options and choose what billing options you would like. We can even round time entries for you. Where do you want to get the Juris narrative from when you enter these billing items and they do sync over to Juris Suite? Usually the default is description, and again, I'll show you an example of this as well so you can see what I'm talking about. And then what do you want the sort order to be when you're looking a client or matter up? The matching tab. This is where we match codes between time matters and Juris, and this is pretty important. I'm not going to take the time to match out every code because that would take up almost the whole Future Friday segment, but I am going to at least match enough to show you how this works. So I'd find my timekeeper from Juris, in this case Mike Harrison, and I'd match him up to a staff ID that he would have in Time Matters. 
what will happen is that when I send my billing to Juris, it'll be able to match this information up to make sure the correct timekeeper is credited in Juris. So normally you would go through here and match everybody up. You just highlight their name on one side. I think I got Magda in here as well. Yep. And match them. And you want to match everybody you can from Juris. The codes tab. This is how we can tell Juris when we put a time matters code in it what billing code or task code to use in Juris. These codes you see with the dollar sign, those are the expense codes in Juris. And then you have your regular task codes beneath them. So you really want to map as much of these out as you possibly can. Again, I don't want to map out too much. I don't want to take up too much time. We just map out a few of these matter codes so that they work correctly. Uh, general, I will just put with civil for now. And then billing codes you can match up. I'm going to do billable work and just match it up with, I think for now, administration. When I think events, I want to do an attend court. This is one of my examples and do just do an appeal. So you honestly want to match as many of these codes as you possibly can. That will speed up the billing process between the two programs. Again, I'm not going to take the time to match everything up. We'll be here all day. Then the last one is the templates. If you've done any kind of customization to Time Matters, this is how we can make sure that we've got our fields mapped out to where they should go in Juris. So these are the fields in Juris. This is the Time Matters field. And by default, we've got it mapped up pretty good. But if you've done any customization and you need to map out some of these fields so they transfer to the right spot in Time Matters and or Juris, you can remap some of these information pieces out. Once you're done, click OK and you have gotten the program level set. Now, it may ask you for a login information. This is your Juris user ID and password. We've been using that Juris RO, that's for the SQL backend. This screen is asking for your actual username and password for Juris. Now, you can just use your actual username and password. I'm just gonna use SMGR to speed it up, and I can have it remember the ID and password, or anytime the two programs want to talk, I can have it prompt me that I have to enter that in before it'll send information. And then click OK. At this point, my program level link is set up. It's going to ask me to exit Time Matters and restart. I'll quick jump back in. And then the last thing I need to do is activate the users that should be able to use this link. So now I'll go to File, Setup, General, and User Level. And now we'll, if I'm an admin, I should have access to all users. So I just select the Time Matters user ID, go to Links, Activate Billing so they have access to the link and then I can set billing options. And here's the link, I can test the link if I want to verify it's working. I can tell it to use program level settings or each user can have their own billing settings. Here's where they can enter a username and password. This is where if I wanted to have multiple templates in Juris for each timekeeper, I could specify a specific template. So instead of that 999 template I have for Time Matters, I could set up a template specific to each timekeeper that I could map out to for each user. And do they have the ability to sync information from Juris back to Time Matters? If you don't want them to, you can disallow by unchecking the box. And then I click OK. Click OK again. And then once you're done, restart Time Matters one last time. And now I have the link between Time Matters and Juris set up. So the first option I'm going to show you is if you want to enter clients and matters in Time Matters and then have them populate over into Juris. And again, this is one of the things that has changed in this 14.1 release of Time Matters. Now I want to add a contact in, and I'm going to take an existing contact to speed things up a tad. 
if I go into this client or contact, there will now be a Juris tab. So when you set up the link, we will add a new tab for Juris. I would enter my client information here. When I'm done, click on the Juris tab. And if I want this client in time, I'm sorry, from, the, from Time Matters in Juris, I can now put in a client code. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Time Matters, we have a contact list. This is where everybody you come into contact with as a firm goes, not just clients. Juris has a client list. Time Matters has a contact list that includes clients. It also includes co-counsel, judges, opposing counsel, the pizza delivery guy, family members, anything you want in the contact list. So by going to this Juris tab, you can specify which of these are actual clients you want in Juris by putting in a Juris client code. Now, I can look up to my list now in Juris to see what my next client code should be. Or you can have Time Matters auto number and set it up. The only thing you have to remember is because Time Matters has a numbering system and Juris has a numbering system, they may be set up differently. So you have to make sure that whatever numbering system you use is compatible with both programs. Time Matters has a has a larger configuration for client numbers than Juris does. So I'm going to use the client mindset for four digits. So in Juris, I'm going to call this 0011. So it's going to be one zero off from the client number and time matters. If I'd had these set up properly, then I could just copy and paste this client number to here and then send that to Juris that way. Previously, before the 14.1 update in time matters, you would have had this section here would have been your linking field to Juris, but you would not be able to see all the rest of this. Like now we can see Juris reports as well from within. Then I just save this record and it'll ask me, do you want to add this client to your Juris database? And I can click yes. Give it a couple seconds to send that information over. And when that is done, I will now have a new client in Juris for Barry Abel. I can save and close his record. And then I can do the same thing with the matters. In Time Matters, Matters has its own list. In Juris, the matters attached to the client. We do things a little bit differently in Time Matters. If I open up this matter, Able versus the State of Florida, it is linked to Barry Able. We use a lot of linking in Time Matters. And there is now a Juris tab on the matter. And it's the same process. Now, this matter number is completely different than what I have in Juris. I normally could just copy and paste, but because of the way my juror is set up, I'm going to have to actually type this in manually. I'm going to just call this matter 0001. Save and close the record. Do I want to add the matter to Juris? And I tell it yes. Give it a couple seconds to install that over to Juris. And now Able versus State of Florida should be in my Juris database. And if I open Juris up, SMGR, SMGR, I can now see under my tables, under my clients, I have a new client. Now I have to go take a look at something. I'll show you why that happened and how I can fix it. It still says time matters. There's a reason it did that. But here's the information. Again, that's wrong, but I can fix it. And in the matters, there's the matter 0001, which is the Able versus State of Florida case. Now, the reason that it came in as time matters and not very able is because of the mapping. And I will, let me just close out of that, minimize, go back to time matters and go back to my contacts list and go to Barry Able. Well, it should have pulled over this title. I don't know why it didn't pull over principal. Usually what you would do is you would copy from the full name here and paste it into this title. I'm just going to call this Barry Able. 
And when I save this, this should update in Juris. Because of the mapping, it still pulled that time matters name, which is what I don't want. Should have updated, it still hasn't. This should actually say variable. I'll have to look at this a little bit later and see why it's not pulling incorrectly, but that is what it should do, is that nickname should be pulling from that field over in time matters. Let me just do one last little thing, see if it'll work. Yep, yep, that was set right. Full name is individual. So as long as you've got their name here and you've got the title with their name, it should go over properly. I apologize, my little demo did not work as it should have, but it should go over properly. Now, if you want to use Juris for your main client and matters, instead of doing what I did by opening this up and creating the contact and saying it to Juris, you can do it the other way around. And you'll see in Juris, I do have a list of clients in here that are not in time matters. These are all different clients. So if I wanted to use Juris as the primary client matter entry point, then time matters, I can go to file, well, file, there we go, synchronize Juris. And that will read the Juris database for clients and matters. I can confirm changes so I make sure everything's coming over correctly. It will look at Juris and now will add all of these records, 71 records. JonesNet, Genco, these will be added as clients. Down below, those are all the matters that will be added into my database. Here's where the records have changed a little bit, so they're going to update the records as well. I click Next, and I make the changes. And now all that information that was in Juris will be in Time Matters. I'll just close out of my list right quick. Refresh them. And now I have my contacts from Juris in my contacts list in Time Matters. And the matters that were in Juris are now in my matters list as well in Time Matters. All these general cases are Juris. Copyright is Juris. So that's how the link works. The other thing that we did is control how time is passed to Juris before it would go into Juris Core. So that meant that whoever was in charge of billing would have to make edits to those entries in Juris Core. In 14.1, we have now sent those entries to Juris Suite when you bill. So, for example, if I go to my calendar, and let's say I wanted to bill out where I attended court for Able versus State of Florida, I can open up this record in Time Matters, and there's a Send a Billing icon. I click on that, it opens up a billing item form, and it pulls the information that I mapped out from Juris. So it knows the attend court should be the L500 code, my Harrison is my Harrison, and this client matter is mapped out to the client matter in Juris. I had that on my calendar for two hours, from eight to 10, so it pulled in the duration of two hours. It pulled the rate from Juris, my Harrison has a $300 an hour rate, and it'll create a billing entry for $600 in Juris Suite. To get this into Juris Suite, I just click on this button one more time, and it tells me it's sending it to Juris Suite, and the record was sent. And it's just reminding me that it's in Juris Suite, I still have to submit it to core like I normally would if I was using Juris Suite for time entry. So what's the allow you to do is if you're using time matters to track stuff like this, you can send these entries over and bill them directly to Jura Suite without having to create a separate time entry. You can bill all of these yourself. With the time entry advisor feature in time matters, if I go to billing time entry advisor, this will go through all of my entries in time matters that were marked billable but never were sent to Juris and that will remind me to capture those items that I may not have billed out by doing the same process I just did. So I set where I'm looking for entries I might have missed. I'm going to switch this to all to date. I can select a specific timekeeper's entries I'm looking for or specific matter client, update the list, 
and now it'll show me entries that I have not sent over and billed yet. So I can tag those items I haven't billed and tell it send a billing. I can tell it to process automatically, create the billing records on my extended jurors, or I can confirm each action. I'm going to do the process automatically. Click OK. If there's an error detected, it'll show up in red saying we could not send this over to Juris. So I can click on the change to see why I can't. And that's because there is no rate in here for some reason, which it should have a rate. So I'll uncheck that and I will put in a manual rate, 300. Oh, that's why. It doesn't have a proper task code. It needs an actual task code from Juris. These three should always be filled out properly in order for that to go to Juris. And now it pulls in the correct one. It's missing the task code. So I'll save and close that record. I don't know why it's asking me that because he had a contact in there. Let's see where he went. There he is. That's that renaming function. Okay, I just did this. I'll do it manually. It's going to be a pain, and I want to show you this. Should have moved it over to this awaiting billing. I'm going to open this up manually. I'm going to switch this manually. That should all be set. Send a billing. Oh, record deleted by another station. Awesome. That's an error you don't want to see in time matters. So, unfortunately, this did not work out quite the way it did when I practiced. But what I will show you is that one entry I did send over is now in Jura Suite. Sweet a minute to catch up. Cancel out of that. I'm going to open this record up real quick. While Jura Suite is opening in the background, I want to try to get one thing to work for me. I am going to change who this is going to. Send a billing. Choose a task code. Send one more time. That sent it. We'll go to Jura Suite. We will log in. And we'll see when we get in the time entry for Mike Harrison that he has his time entries now in Jura Suite. and then these time entries can be edited as necessary. The thing to remember about this link is it only sends changes between time matters and juris, um, between contacts and matters. Once you send a billing item over, any changes you make to the billing item here are not going to actually transfer back to the other program. So when you set this up, you do have to remember that only clients and matters are going across, not actual time entry changes. If I add this task column real quick, 
it should show that it even follows the rules that we design in Jura Suite for time entries. I've got the red X because this particular narrative begins with a lowercase c, and all my narratives need to begin with a capital letter. So if you make a mistake in time matters, you can set up your Juris rules that'll catch those mistakes in Juris Suite will make it easier for your timekeepers and make sure those entries are entered in correctly before they go ahead and submit those over to Juris Core for billing. So the nice thing about using time matters for sending your billing over is you still have to obey your Juris rules in Juris Suite. Another reason why we switched in 14.1 to use Juris Suite as the time entry device. Again, if you're updating from Time Matters, an earlier version, to the newest 14.1 release with Juris, we will update your existing link. You will just now use that Juris tab going forward for any clients and matters. So that is the link between Time Matters and Juris with the new Time Matters 14.1 release. Again, as we go back to my PowerPoint, a lot of this information is going to be here for you to refer back to. It's also in the help files in Time Matters, and I believe even on the website you can find that in Time Matters. And here's where you got to make sure, send a billing, those three fields need to be filled out from Juris Suite, and then this will shows up in Juris Core, or Juris Suite time entry transactions and the time entry advisor will help you find those items that you did not bill yet. Any other training options you would like going forward, we do on the LexisNexis.com slash university offer live instructor-led virtual classes. We also have classes that we put in our training rooms, both in Raleigh, Chicago, all over the country, so you can check the university if there's a training class near you. And you can also always contact a Juris Consultant if you prefer to have somebody come to your office to work with you. Um, other than that, I thank you all so much for your time, and we will see if we have any questions. So, Katie, back to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dwayne, for your very informative session. This does conclude the presentation portion of the webinar. So, as a reminder, if you do have any questions for Dwayne, please feel free to ask them via the questions pane located on your webinar control panel. And as we're waiting for those questions to come in, uh, I am going to launch a poll on the screen. If you would like more information on linking your Juris software with Time Matters, just go ahead and select yes or no. Uh, and hopefully this answered all of your questions. And I'm going to give you guys just a few minutes to take that poll. And I'm going to give it just one more minute. All right. Well, thank you guys um, for that. All right. Our first question comes from uh, Rebecca. The question is, if time is entered into Juris Suite, does it sync back to Time Matters? It does not. Time entries will never sync from Juris Suite to Time Matters. Only client and matter changes will. Um, the only direction it goes is if you enter a time entry into Time Matters, you can send it to Juris Suite, but it will never go the other way. All right. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh, our next question is also from Rebecca, a different Rebecca. Uh, it is, if we do not have Suite, will Time Matters 14.1 link to Juris Core? It will not. That's actually a very good question. Um, as of 14.1, we require you to have Juris Suite in order for the link to work. So if you're a current Time Matters user and you do not have 14.1 and you do not have Juris Suite, you do not want to update to Juris, I'm sorry, to Time Matters 14.1, the link will not work. So, yes, you have to have Juris Suite with Time Matters 14.1, or you cannot set up the link. Excellent question. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, wonderful. Our next question is from Mary Ann. Um, does this work in a Citrix environment? I honestly don't have an answer to that. Theoretically, Time Matters should work in Citrix. 
I am not sure about the Jura support on Citrix. I would have to find that out. Um, if you send a question to me, um, Ellen Training at LexisNexis.com, Marianne, I will find out and I will get back to you. I'm not 100% sure if it'll work in the Citrix, but I can ask the support to engineers and find out for you. All right, wonderful. Um, our next question is, can you still think from Juris two time matters? I'm not sure if that's the same question that was asked in it initially at the beginning. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer it this way. If you are using time matters with a Juris link currently, as long as you have Juris suite, you can update to time matters 14.1. If you have Juris Suite and you want to sync your clients and matters from Juris Core to Time Matters, you can. It works that way. That's fine. The important thing is, depending on which version of Time Matters and which version of Juris you have, whether they're going to work. So if you have Time Matters 14.1, you have to have Juris 2.6 or higher for this link to work, and you have to have Juris Suite. If you have anything below Time Matters 14.1, then you can still link it to Juris Core 2.6 and below. If you've got Juris 2.7 or higher, the Time Matters link will not work, even if you use a lower version of Time Matters um, with 2.7. 2.7 requires you have Juris Suite 2.7 and Time Matters 14.1. As long as you meet any of those requirements and they link together, then you can send time, I'm sorry, Juris contact and matter information to time matters. And if you make changes and do a sync, it will update both sides. Hopefully that answered the question. If it's still confusing, please shoot me an email at lntraining at LexisNexis.com. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions we have at the moment. Um, I'm going to give everybody one more minute to just, just in case uh, we have any lingering questions out there. Um, but I do want to encourage anyone, if you do have additional questions, make sure once again you email Ellen Training at LexisNexis.com. Training is a fabulous resource and you can always access them online too, right? Of course. Awesome. Well, it looks like that is it for today. So that officially concludes today's webinar, and I would like to thank Dwayne once again for his expert advice on today's topic, and thank you to all of our attendees for taking time out of your busy day today.